I, uh, the topic is about the automated process instead of machines. So uh, what exactly my process uh, is, I have developed one automated system for carrying out the CAD modeling and design. And I can call that system as a knowledge based. Uh, if people don't know about what exactly is the knowledge based system, then definitely I'll uh, give the clarity on that in this uh, presentation. So if you look at the contents of this presentation, first I'll give some introduction about what is the need of this uh, system and then I'll explain you what is a knowledge based system. Next, uh, parametric modeling technique and then uh, SolidWorks API. SolidWorks is a CAD software. I hope everyone of you know it about, about that. So in that I'm using the API of that. Um, uh, using the macro codes for uh, carrying out the automation. After completion of that, I'll explain about the um, two case studies that I did uh, based on this developer one. So the first half will be uh, theory part. So you should uh, you should be patient to understand the theory part. Later you can understand the powerfulness of this uh, knowledge based systems. But to go to the introduction part, so knowledge based system. In short, it is called as a KBS. It's well known as KBS. So knowledge based system is a computer program that uses knowledge base to solve complex problems. So it is just like as a computer program. So KBS is just like as a computer program, but it works based on knowledge base. Usually any program or any package, it works based on the uh, database, right? Because for getting any information for the application, it goes to the database and it, it uh, retrieves some information for that and it will be executing the same data. But here, this system uses the knowledge base instead of the database. I'll tell you what the actual difference between database and knowledge base in the coming slides. So this system uses the knowledge base to solve the complex problems. The problem can be, uh, it can be a manufacturing one or it can be a design one or it can be anything. As I am concentrating on the mechanical industry, so I'll be talking much on the design and manufacturing or the CAD modeling. Okay, so this, these type of systems can be used for other applications also. Now the doctors are uh, uh, adopted, doctors already adopted these type of systems to uh, treat the patients in the absence of the doctor as well. Uh, let me go a bit history about this. Uh, in 1960s, uh, general purpose programs were developed. That means in, in about 1960s, we have started developing some systems. Uh, by executing those systems, we can get them solutions. But those systems are all generic, general purpose. So they are not very suitable for the specific uh, applications. But we, uh, but if you look at the industry problems, the problems we cannot predict, right? The how the problem will come in future we cannot predict so sometimes the problem will be very specific and sometimes it is generic so those softwares that are already developed in 1960s are, are doing good for the generic problems but they are not doing good for the specific problems that means specific problems means that comes in very rare cases and that problem will be very costly to solve so those things they are not able to address so th th that is actual um, uh, scenario where the industry felt these systems must be improved with much more knowledge. So, but the main uh, drawback here, as I told you, that is, um, they but they produce no breakthrough. No breakthrough. That means, of course, they have did some uh, advantage to the uh, market, but there is no much. The industry wants more from that. Then the researchers realized that the problem solving power of the program comes from the knowledge it possesses. That means then the researchers, they have realized that by just executing this program, we may not be able to get the actual solution. We should give the knowledge to the program, then only we can able to get the actual solutions from the system. So for that, they started developing the knowledge basis. So later, artificial intelligent researchers developed more robust systems called KBS. Then at, the, at that stage, the artificial intelligence came uh, into the existence. That is the early stage of uh, artificial intelligence. So those techniques are adopted to this 
uh, systems and the, uh, and the researchers started uh, solving the real world problems using these techniques and they have developed the uh, systems called KBS and that KBS is robust as well. Robust means it will uh, sustain whatever the problem it get and it will solve it. Okay. But this KBS was primarily called as expert system. Usually there is a confusion between uh, uh, knowledge based system and the expert system. There is a confusion here. So usually people uh, often use them as a synonyms, but there is a mild uh, difference between these two. Let me explain. So expert system is a part of knowledge based system. There is a mild difference. Let me explain you more. Expert system is to try to assist or replace a human expert in a complex task. Suppose if you are having any uh, uh, a task or any problem in the industry or anywhere, so that system, that expert system, that's also a program, just like as a KBS, uh, that expert system will give the solution to the operator based on the experience. Okay. Based on the experience, that means if, uh, for example, if an operator is having one problem, the system will check what should be the solution for this problem based on the history. If you just check the history uh, in near future, does we get, does we encounter this type of problem? If yes, what is the solution? It just uh, um, searches for the solution and it gives the same to the operator. That's it. So it just behaves like an experienced person or an expert system. But whereas, um, yeah, and one more, and the expert system is uh, simply like if then rule based. If is the condition, then is a solution. Okay, if then rules. And if you look at the knowledge based system, the architecture that represents knowledge, that means this system will have the knowledge just like as a human and it thinks just like as human to solve a particular task. That is the advantage with this knowledge based system. And it provides a lot of high quality specific knowledge. And undoubtedly, it should have the lot of uh, knowledge with it. And at the same time, it will, uh, it will produce the best quality uh, solutions for the problems. Okay. What is knowledge based system for real world? How exactly can be treated? In real world, the problems do not have well defined solutions. We all know in our actual world, there is no guarantee that there will be solution for every problem that we are facing. Okay, so, so the KBS can be used for these purposes. Its knowledge is to create and uh, represent the solutions. So the knowledge in the uh, these systems can be used to create the solution. So how it exactly works? It uses the heuristic cause and effect rather than algorithms. So algorithms are just a, I think everyone of you know what is algorithm. So if you go for the algorithm, this, then the program uh, we cannot guarantee that that is a completely a uh, a knowledge uh, a knowledge based one it's just as an expert one but it's not knowledge. okay so if with the cause and effect then we can definitely tell the system the basic system so it is the knowledge base to account or to uh, solve the issues like this okay the other side you can see knowledge base is enter so that is the actual space where it will have all the things around it. That is, it starts from the topmost, that is rules. So knowledge base will have the rules about the design or rules about the manufacturing or rules about the modeling or whatever. And next, the objects, attributes, hypothesis, relations, definitions, events, facts, processes, heuristics, all these will be clubbed and will be kept in the knowledge base in a logical manner. It's not just kept as a rows and columns in the uh, knowledge base, just like as a database. In database, we can see that all the things are just kept in a rows and columns. They're all fields. So if you want to retrieve anything, we'll just go to that field and we'll be retrieving it, that's it. But whereas in the knowledge base, it is just like as a uh, database, but the main difference between the database and knowledge base is in knowledge base, the data which is available in database is logically linked. It's logically linked and that link will be 
uh, will a link can be changed by the program itself if in case it's required in future so that's the powerfulness of the knowledge based things so it contains organized collection of facts about the respective domain like the question answers documents so the, it, it can have the knowledge in the form of like this like question answers um, documents or a frequently asked questions or how to guide or troubleshooting instructions or anything like this so knowledge base can be kept in many ways so the like this uh, th these four are the very common way of representing the knowledge in that next what is knowledge base system and how exactly it looks like so this is a simple uh, architecture of the knowledge base uh, in between you can see there's a dotted line is a rectangle dotted line so inside of that there are three rectangular boxes right so first one is a GUI, graphical user interface, and that is connected with the inference engine at the top, and at the bottom, it is already connected with the knowledge base. Again, that inference engine and knowledge base are connected to each other. So those three comes together, we can call that as a knowledge base of system. Let me, ex uh, let me explain you how exactly this knowledge base system works. Suppose, let us take a small scenario. Suppose a user is there that we can see at the left, the user is there and he wants to have some solution for a particular uh, for a particular uh, problem and he'll be using the gui for giving the problem to the system so system means it's a knowledge based system so there will be some gui in that some questions will be there so through the questions he'll try to explain what exactly the problem is so based on that those questions the uh, the system will go into the uh, inference engine first Okay, at the top you can see inference engine. So after getting the question from the GUI, the system will go to the inference engine. In inference engine, it will cross check whether those questions are enough for uh, uh, for uh, uh, computing the solution or not. Is it possible to have a solution with those data or not? It just looks for the same in the inference engine. That means in inference when the moment when the uh, system is at the inference engine, it's not it started the solution. It's just checking that whether the solution can be get or not. Can we able to get the solution or not? It just checks the same at the inference engine. And then when it passes through the inference engine, it goes to the knowledge base. So the moment it passed, the inference engine means we can have the solution. Now, why it went to the knowledge base is which type of solution we should give. So that, that is the purpose. It went into the knowledge base. Now it checked for what is the already... Uh, written solution if it is there for the uh, for the problem if it is not there what can be the solution for this or if in case is not even uh, able to get the exact solution for the problem it may at least give a suggestion to the operator you can you may use this for solving particular part of particular uh, problem so this is how uh, the architecture looks like and the knowledge base how can we make the knowledge base? That's the thing. At the bottom, you can see at the right side, the knowledge base is again further linked with the two different sections. One is called the domain experts, and the next one is standards. Domain experts is just like as a human, he gives all the knowledge to the database in the form of a logical manner, like uh, his experiences or any thumb rules or uh, or, or whatever uh, the shortcuts is following for solving any problem. So those things will be given to the knowledge base through the domain experts. And then we have a standards. And then we have the standards. Those standards will uh, will be just like as ISO standards or AGMA standards or ASTM likewise. So all these things will be kept in the knowledge base. And that knowledge base is linked to the inference engine and to the GUI. Once the solution we got from the knowledge base that will be given to the GUI and to through GUI that will be given to the user. So this is how the entire knowledge base system works. Okay, I repeat. So the user will use the user will do uh, uh, the what exactly the problem he is facing through the GUI to the knowledge base system and that system will go to the inference engine first and we will check whether the solution can be obtained or not. If the solution is obtained, then it go to the knowledge base, the appropriate solution for this. If in case the solution is not there with it, at least it tries to give the suggestion for the problem. And then 
that solution will be given back to the GUI so that the user can see what is the solution for it. Okay, this is the architecture of uh, KBS. Next, uh, as I am concentrate, as I am concentrating on the CAD modeling and design, so let me give a small introduction about the CAD modeling. So broadly, the CAD modeling is of two types: variant and generative. So variant type means uh, it involves it evolves from the manual CAD modeling. That means it starts from the very basic uh, CAD modeling. That means uh, We'll be starting, if you want to model anything, we'll be starting from the right basics of that. That means first we'll be drawing a line and then um, a circle, extruding it, cutting, revolving, like, like that. So that means there won't be any pre-available model for that. We, we start from right from the scrap. If you're following that type of modeling, then we call that as a variant type. But we're having another type that's called the generative type. In generative type, what exactly we do is we won't be going for... Um, um, modeling, we weren't going to model the new component. We just go for, uh, first we go for such or for any similar components which is already available in the database. We just go for the similar components and then we try to make some changes to that. So after that, we try to make uh, that suitable to the actual needs and then we'll be giving the solution to the operator as stating that that is the actual CAD model required. And for this, uh, knowledge base system i am using the second type that is generative type so generative type uh, is one that retrieves from the database um, uh, uh, that, that first checks the that first check for the any uh, suitable cad model which is already available in the database and then it makes a small changes in that so that it uh, that will be suitable for the new uh, problem or new need so some features I have given at the points here. The computers are used to identify the similar model first. And then the design calculations can be automated if you go with the generator type. That is the advantage of this. And next advantage is, advantage is the third point. An automatic CAD model can be easily generated with the predefined framework or logical algorithms and geometrical data. So this is the advantage with if you go with the generator type. That's why I have chosen this generator type for uh, carrying out this system development. Next, it, uh, this type of CAD modeling visualizes the creation of CAD model without human intervention. This is the most advantage one. So this modeling can be done without the intervention of human. That means without the human, we can have a solution from the system. That is the most advantage that we are having from this uh, system. Next one is the required knowledge to generate an automatic CAD model can be encoded as a computer program. So if you are following this type of CAD modeling, then we can write a program to encode uh, or to generate any CAD model. That is the advantage. So that's why I have chosen this type of system. So this type of CAD modeling for development of my system. Next, if I go to the next uh, thing that is a metric modeling technique, so we should know about this technique because uh, if you already aware about the CAD modeling, uh, I think you know about this uh, parametric modeling technique. Uh, I have adopted this technique for development of the CAD model in my system. So what exactly the parametric modeling technique? So it is a interlinks. Uh, it, it interlinks the related parameters. I'll show you on small figure at the bottom. So at the left, you can see uh, that is a hexagonal bolt, hexagonal bolt. So this hexagonal bolt dimensions are completely dependent on one dimension of it, that is a nominal diameter, usually we call it as D. So the thickness of head is dependent on D, the width across the flats is dependent on T, and width across corners is also dependent on T. D. But here the length of the bolt is not dependent on D value, that is a nominal diameter. It is independent. So if you want to model the hexagonal bolt, you're supposed to have D value, D is the nominal dia, and L value, L is the length of the bolt. So if you're having these two values, then we can model any uh, hexagonal bolt. So that means what I do is when you are uh, modeling it, uh, we first, we, we should obtain those two values, that is D and L. Okay, D is the nominal diameter and L is the length. And after that, 
I try to calculate what are the other parameters um, uh, to be made in the modeling. The other parameters are thickness of the head, and then width across the flats, and then width across the corners. So those are all uh, dependent as uh, dependent uh, on D as it as a given in the right side. Here you can see. So the width across the flats that is this. The width across the flats is uh, given uh, with the formula 1.5D plus 3 mm, right? So that means that uh, width across the flat can be calculated by using this formula. That means what I do is I'll be using this formula uh, 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 while I'm uh, trying to model anything. I'll be using this formula to give the value width across the flats. I won't give the actual value. I just give that value in terms of formula or in terms of relation. Okay, or in terms of equation. So if you try to uh, uh, model with this type of approach, then that approach is called the parametric modeling. If you model anything with this approach, then that's called parametric modeling. I'm adopting this because uh, for my program, as uh, uh, for carrying out all the modeling job, I am using the equations. So once I have the, all the equation in terms of uh, uh, any specific uh, variable, then the entire equation can be uh, executed easily because that is dependent on two or three variables. So that is the main purpose why I adopted this parametric modeling technique. Next, SOLIDWORKS API. And uh, I think you all know about uh, SOLIDWORKS. So it is a uh, one of the popular uh, CAD modeling software. And in that, I have utilized the API facility of the CAD modeling. And why I have chosen this one is uh, uh, in SOLIDWORKS API, it's very easy to interlink the uh, Windows-based applications to the uh, SOLIDWORKS because the API works based on the Visual Basic language and Visual Basic uh, is from the Microsoft one. So, and Windows is from the Microsoft. So, if you go with all these, then we won't be having any interlink issues. Okay. So, that's why I have chosen this uh, SOLIDWORKS. We can use any software any software, but I have chosen uh, the SOLIDWORKS. Uh, the only reason behind this is uh, to avoid the um, um, interlink issues in future. Okay. okay, in SOLIDWORKS, what is API? Application Programming Interface. I repeat, Application Programming Interface is a tool which provides integration between different applications. So with the API, we can connect two different applications. That is the main advantage here. So what I'm trying to do in my system is I wanted to uh, generate a CAD model, right? So naturally, for generating CAD model, we're supposed to have one CAD software. So for that, I'm using the SOLIDWORKS software for generating the CAD model. But how to give the information to the CAD software? Because I don't want to use the mouse and keyboard again for giving the information to the SOLIDWORKS for generating of any component. So I wanted to use one more medium like a user interface and from that user interface the solid model i mean the solid works should take the inputs and it should generate the model that's what my intention here so i have used this api because i wanted to interlink two different applications one is solid works and another one is a gui that gui can be developed in any any platform it can be a vb based or it can be on html based or whatever or wherever okay so that is the one I have used here, the API. Uh, this API contains hundreds of functions that one can call from Visual Basic for applications like uh, VBA. That's what I just said before. So I am as a, I'm using the VBA. So this is the Visual Basic for application. Or even you can use the VB.NET or Visual C Sharp or Visual C++ or Visual C++ or CLI. So anything you can use in the place of this API. So these functions provide direct access to SOLIDWORKS functionality. So whatever the functions I told in the second point, those anything can be used to trigger the SOLIDWORKS functionalities. So with the help of SOLIDWORKS API, the automation of modeling assembly of component is possible by writing specific codes. So that is the main advantage with this. And next, as I told you, for uh, giving the for uh, making the GUI, we supposed to use one software. So here I have used the Visual Basic language. So let me give some introduction about the Visual Basic because it is required 
uh, is to understand why I've gone, why, why I went for the Visual Basic. So Visual Basic language was released by the Microsoft in uh, 1991. So that means it is a very old language, but still with this, we can have very good GUIs. Okay. And it is the user friendly program, very simple to use and very simple to operate, very simple to give the coding to it, very, very easy one. So it is very user friendly um, a programming language designed for beginners and it enables anyone to develop the GUI. Almost everyone, the person who doesn't have any programming knowledge can definitely develop a GUI for his purpose. And that is a, this is one of the reasons why I've chosen this uh, um, uh, VB language for generating the GUI because I'm not very expert in the programming. So that's why I've chosen this because it's very simple to use and it's very easy to link the other software to this. And additionally, VB is a, uh, a successful engine for generating the macros in all Microsoft software. As I told you before, macro uh, and the introduction part, you might have um, observed it. Macro is the one that will be used for uh, uh, automating the CAD modeling. There's a very, very, very important topic for this. And uh, if you use the VB as a successful in VB for the uh, modeling, then macro can be easily interlinked with the VB. So that's why I have, that is another reason why I have chosen the VB uh, for uh, developing the GUI for the system. And I have told the same in the point. And next, apart from this, uh, using VB, we can even generate our new tools or new uh, toolbars or menus in any software. For example, uh, in SolidWorks or any CAD software, you can see uh, an option like uh, Extrude, Revolve, uh, CAD, or something like that, right? So if you want to have any uh, such type of uh, buttons to be created in your uh, software, we can do using this Visual Basic language. That means in the inside of the SolidWorks, we can make our own buttons and we can give our own program to that button. So after clicking on that button, our own program will be executed. So that is the most uh, advantageous one with this. That's where that is another reason why I've chosen this Visual Basic for the purpose. And next, macro. So this is a very important one to understand. So macro is a, it's a fragment of code. Just in simple words, it is just a code, just like as a C language or any other uh, thing. It's just like as a code, but this can be understood by the uh, packages at the back end, not at the front end, at the back end. Okay, that means the SolidWorks can understand the macro code at the back end, but at the front end, it cannot understandable because the, the code will be a bit difficult to understand. But at the back end, the software uh, can definitely understand because all these are based on the Microsoft Windows. So that helps them to understand what exactly the code is. So the macro file stores the 3D coordinates of drawn entities. So whatever the macro file uh, we wanted to generate, it can store the 3D entities or 3D, uh, 3D coordinates of any uh, drawn entities. Next, the CAD model of the component can be created or stored in the form of macro. So you should understand this. Uh, if you want to have any CAD model in your software, what exactly we do is we first we will be drawing the CAD model in the system, and then we'll be saving that in the form of uh, uh, extension of the uh, in the extension of the particular software. That's fine. But instead of that, we are having one more way of storing the same data, that is in with the help of the macro. So we even we can store any component, any CAD model in the other uh, uh, way is the macro. Okay, that means the macro is a complete code. If you execute that code, you will be getting the CAD model as the output. So this is another way of storing it. So that can be created with the uh, APIs. That is another advantage. Uh, that means the macros can be, a macro code can be created or stored with this one. It has the ability to replay the recorded operation. The another advantage with this is we can replay whatever uh, thing we have uh, made. We can replay it again and again. That is another advantage. Advantage with this. Here you can see the code of that. Uh, so uh, uh, if you get the screenshot here, the right side you can see the comments. The topmost one is just a comment that is non-executable that won't execute there you can just write uh, for what purpose the program has been written and next one is the declaration that means who has written and what for it is written and uh, what are the different uh, 
uh, supporting files it's supposed to have to execute it. And next is the actual procedure. In the right side, you can see the procedure. That is the actual code of our model. If you want to have any model that is actual code, by executing this, you can get the actual model. So this is a simple code for generating the rectangular box in the SOLIDWORKS. So if you want to have any rectangular box to be drawn in the SOLIDWORKS software, usually what we do is we will be using the mouse and we will be giving the um, um, uh, two points on the screen, like uh, the starting point and the ending point. In between those two points, the software will develop one rectangle, right? This was the usual procedure. But here, instead of using the mouse or the keyboard, using the program, we can give those two points to the software, like first point and second point. So by executing this program, the rectangle can be formed on the screen of the software. That means on the SOLIDWORKS. So this type of feature is available in almost every CAD software. So the extension that are um, uh, used for uh, macro in the SOLIDWORKS is SWB. It's uh, given as the first one here. So SWB is the extension for them. And if you with the other softwares like IDEA, the, uh, the extension is program. And the CREO or the e the extension will be trial. And in the UG, that is macro, UG is named as NX now. So the macro is named for it. And in the CATI, it is called the script. So all these are same. All these are same. All these contains the macro in a programming, uh, in a logical manner. The program is written for generating any CAT model. Then how to use KBS? So till now, I have given you the introduction or the basic knowledge required to understand the knowledge base system. Now let us go for the actual applications of this. The very first step uh, is to develop the knowledge base system. What were the application you are having? You first develop a knowledge base for that, and then you link that to a CAT software using a macro program. So in between, we have a macro program. Just I show you what is a macro program. So after linking with the CAD model, we can achieve the actual model as the output by executing this program. That is, by executing the macro code, we can get the actual model as the output. And how how can we generate that output is uh, the technique we followed here is parametric modeling technique. I have in the introduction, I told you what exactly is the parametric modeling technique. But how to give the inputs to the system? The first, the user will give the input to the knowledge base system, and then that system is linked to the CAD software, and that information will be given to the CAD software in the form of macro code, and that macro code will be executed in the CAD software using the parametric modeling technique, and by executing that, um, uh, by using that technique, we can generate the CAD model. So in simple, in one line, if you ask me what Excel system is, input is customer requirement and the output is CAD model. That's it. OK? That means if you want to generate a, a, a gear, you just give the input to the system stating that, so this should be the module of that, and this should be the load, and this should be the RPM. So those things, based on those RPM, or those, on those information, the system will develop what should be your uh, actual gear for the purpose, okay? And this system can be not only used by the layman, it can also be used by the experts. Okay. So, and more than that, now, because of the advancements in the internet and the advancements in the cloud computing, we can even use these systems in the server in the cloud. So now I have executed this system in the cloud Earlier, I was um, using the same system in the server, which is available in the my lab here. But um, now I'm not using it because uh, it, it, it takes too much uh, time and it takes too much, uh, um, uh, I mean, the resources for uh, executing it. So that's why I went into the cloud and I placed the entire thing into the cloud. And my entire system will be done based on that. So that is advantage. That entire thing, when we go into the cloud, the solution will be very fast. It will never. Uh, if you, it will never, um, it will never crash the system. It definitely gives a solution. Okay. So this is the simple um, flow chart. I have given it a bit much more in deeper. In the first, in the earlier slide, I have given the same type of thing, but that was uh, very raw. And here I have uh, given you much more detail. The user will be there, and he will be asking the uh, system through a GUI. This GUI will take up what are the required. That will be went to the inference engine. In inference engine, the people can understand 
uh, sorry, the system can understand whether the solution can be achievable or not. If it is achievable, then it goes to the next level to the knowledge base. And in the knowledge base, it sets for the, it will be searching for the actual uh, solution. And that knowledge base is uh, uh, the combination of design experts and uh, the standards like uh, ISO standards or EGMA standards or whatever. Okay. And uh, let me go to the case study. Uh, one of the student, uh, uh, he has developed one uh, uh, spur gear uh, under my guidance here. So he has used the SOLIDWORKS uh, platform. And here you can see a button there. Usually you won't see this type of button in the SOLIDWORKS. Sorry. Uh, the SOLIDWORKS interface. So this button was created by one of my students uh, that he created using the PB and at the back end of the uh, button, the macro will be executed. By clicking on that, the macro will be executable. Okay. Next. So by clicking on that uh, uh, button, we can see this GUI. In this GUI, you will be giving the inputs uh, to the system, uh, which type of gear you wanted to have. Okay. So all these are the required fields, but don't be under impression that we should give all the information. It's not required. Whatever the information we just give, if you don't have it, you just omit it. The system will appropriately choose uh, based on the knowledge it is having. Okay, if you don't have uh, any knowledge about the, uh, for example, uh, uh, the gate surface uh, hotness number, if you don't know it, nothing to worry. You can just keep it as a blank. It will go and search for uh, appropriate one uh, from the database or from the database or from the knowledge base and it considers that okay and you may have a doubt how can it consider uh, by itself it takes the input uh, other uh, input values and based on those input values it guesses okay it guesses or it concludes itself to choose a particular value okay anyway let me come back uh, right side, these are the inputs that I have given for a particular uh, gate to be designed Okay, here we can see the speed is 400, the power to be transmitted is 12,000 watts, and the tangential force on the teeth is uh, um, 1,200 newtons. Likewise, I have given the uh, different uh, uh, inputs here. So based on these inputs, the software has developed this CAD model. In the right here, you can see the spur gear, right? So this is the CAD model which was developed by the software uh, that is uh, we have developed in the lab. And the left side, we can see what are the... Uh, or, I mean, the dimensions of the spur gate here. These are the dimensions. I'm not talking about the module and all. I'm just talking about the dimension, like uh, addendum, redendum, a pitch circle, base circle, those uh, dimensions. Okay. okay. At the bottom, you can see this is the most advantage one that we've got. The total time taken is 54 seconds. You just observe. Uh, if you are familiar with the CAD modeling, if I give you the task of uh, uh, trying this CAD model, uh, uh, in the any CAD software, it definitely takes at least one hour. Undoubtedly, it takes one hour. Even with the errors also, it takes one hour. But if you execute this, uh, if you use this system, it takes just 54 seconds to compute, uh, to calculate, and to get the, all the dimensions, and to get the CAD model of that. This is the main advantage with this system. And how we have achieved this is uh, based on the computing uh, uh, based on advancements in the computing and the system that we developed, that is a knowledge based system. And here I wanted to give one more uh, uh, case study, and this is the one, as I told you, this works uh, from the cloud. Okay, so we have developed one uh, web page, and here this web page is for again the field, the same for the spur gear, and here we are having the same inputs. So by just giving some inputs, it will be able to generate the uh, spur gear. Let's check it. It's a small uh, uh, video there. Let's check it out. So we are having different inputs here. So without giving any input, if you click it on OK, it won't give any um, solution to it because nothing is there, right? So that is given by the knowledge base. And if you give some data, it asks for, please enter some more data. With those two uh, values, I cannot de design. So that's what the system replies to you. That means a system uh, is knowledge-based. It will go to the knowledge and it cross-checks whether the, these two inputs can I able to uh, can I able to design as per gear or not. If you feel uh, it's not possible, then it gives a message to the operator that I can't. And later, I have given some inputs to the system. Uh, that you can see on the screen. Uh, 
and after that just click on OK. So entire input data Spurge can be designed. That means with this data a Spurge can be designed. That's fine. But what exactly happened now here is at the back end it has designed a Spurge and it has shown us what should be the dimensions of the Spurge. And after clicking on OK, now it is developing the code for generating the CAD model. So now it has given cloud load it downloading it on my local computer now i'm trying to execute that uh, file whatever i downloaded now now i'm trying to execute it i'll show you so i downloaded on my desktop and i'm just taking it like drag and drop in the solidworks software and that's it now entire cad model is getting generated by itself i'm not doing anything i mean the system uh, uh, as a developer the system using the codes the system has developed the CAD model using the code now you can see the CAD model so it just took seconds uh, generating the CAD model right so this is the advantage with the developer system in fact uh, this is the need of the hour as well for the industry these type of systems are required because um, they wanted to avoid the repeated tasks. They wanted to automate the repeated tasks. So here we can see all the things just like as uh, we do uh, manually, we got all the things in the same way. As we are uh, going shortage of time so let me stop this and let me go to the next slide i hope you understood what is the advantage with this right okay. now i went to the another case study which is the industrial one so this um, this system was uh, executed in a uh, industry called amaraja batteries so I hope you all know about the Amaron batteries. So the, 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 the company is uh, uh, manufacturing the batteries. But for the customer, uh, for the industrial purpose, uh, they wanted to have one stack system for keeping all the batteries in their industry. So what they are asking the uh, company is, along with the batteries, why can't you provide us the stacks so that we'll be keeping all the batteries in a particular place and uh, all the connections can be given by yourself at the particular place in the industry. So that that will be very useful for us. So the batteries company has started developing the stacks as well for supplying the batteries. So, but for, but when they are developing the stacks, they have faced uh, one uh, uh, problem with the customer. They, we all know the customer requirements will be always vary from customer to customer. So they cannot. The, the industry is not able to standardize the battery stacks here. So what they did uh, is they, what they uh, gave us the task that. They wanted to automate the uh, in the I mean the battery stack design system. They wanted to automate it. They want they don't want to do it all the time from right from the scrap because the procedure is always repeatable. But based on the customer, we should make some minor changes in that. They have asked, uh, uh, asked us to do the same for them, and for that I have did it. Okay, and uh, this slide gives the introduction about the Amaraja battery. So I don't want to take uh, much time on this. I think you already known about uh, the company. So this at the left, you can see uh, at the green color one. So these green color are the cells which are manufactured by the battery company. And those green color things are all interlinked with the straight, straight line things are there, right? These are all the uh, interconnectors. This one is the positive, red color is the positive of one cell and black color is the negative of the another cell. Those two are connected with a connector here. So whatever the uh, uh, white color things you can, you are able to see here, they are all the connectors. That means all the batteries are connected in series. Okay. So what exactly the task here they, was, they want from me is, uh, they, they want from me, from me was, uh, they asked me to have a CAD model of the complete stack with all the interlinked connections this is another picture of the same here you can see much uh, understandable so here we can see so 
Okay. Fine. Let me go to the next one. So this is the simple CAD model we have developed at the first stage. So this is just like as a, um, a previous picture. So here we are having a few things. So this vertical one here we can see that is called the ICCV. That's called the intercell connector uh, vertical. And then the horizontal is there, right? That is called the ICCH. That is a intercell connector horizontal. So if the, with the bottom most one, that is a channel that, that takes up the entire weight of the batteries. Okay. And here you can see the horizontal one that is called the ISC. That is the interstack connector. That means it connects between the stacks. Okay, right. And this is a complete stack. This is a complete CAD model of a particular purpose stack. Okay. So at the right side, uh, you can see different um, uh, assembled modules and the different uh, color particles, different color things here are uh, connectors. And the right side, the H figure H is the channel the, all these will be generated by the system uh, as a cad model so i'll show you the same case study uh, here so this is again one more application we developed for uh, getting the cad model of that so here uh, we are uh, gathering the requirements from the customer uh, he has told that the backup capacity he required is a 240 volts and uh, 600 AH and the floor area available at his uh, uh, industry is three square meters and the maximum roof level available there is 660 and the channels at the bottom you can provide is C channels and what should be the maximum height and weight of the entire uh, component. But clicking on OK, the system is um, is not idle now. What exactly the system is doing is the system is calculating what should be the appropriate uh, stack for this, what should be the appropriate uh, uh, interconnections should be made between all those cells at the back end. It is doing with the help of the knowledge base that we have developed as a part of the system. And now it has done the uh, calculation part and CAD modeling part and it has given the uh, uh, file, the macro file to download. Now the user is uh, able to download the file from the system, <clears throat> I mean from the cloud. And then So he downloaded it just like as in the previous case. Now he'll be executing the same from his local system. By just dragging and drop, the system started developing the CAD model by its own. Now the whatever the uh, code we developed that is getting executed and based on the execution, the model is generating. At the right side, you can see that this is the assembly part. So all the assembly parts will be uh, done and that's, those things will be uh, saved in the particular local folder. So you can see there's a module ISC, IECC. These are all the different modules of them. This, this are, these are all the different parts of the uh, <clears throat> different parts of the component. So in the right side, you can easily see what are the different uh, uh, components it has uh, uh, generated. Yeah, at the left side, it has completed the CAD modeling and it is giving what are all the different components it is having. So you just look at it. So how complex the CAD modeling and assembly of that? There are many components in that. And they should be uh, linked with the logical manner in order to make the, a perfect cell in a serious manner. So we all know uh, for a perfect uh, uh, voltage that we get, we should, we should get from the batteries, which that should be interconnected in a series in a proper manner. So that is also given by the system. The system can model, the system can interconnect all the cells in a logical manner, and it uses how, how the complete assembly looks like. So this is the advantage with the system. So the main advantage I will show you at the next slide. So look at the right side, uh, the time taken. The total time taken is uh, 19 seconds to 37 seconds for executing this task. So this is highly difficult for a human being 
to do the, this entire assembly and modeling in just one day. But it has, uh, the system is able to do in just 19 uh, to 37 seconds. And you may ask why it is a range there, 19 to 37. Because the customer requirements vary from uh, one purpose to another purpose, right? So 19 is the fastest one and 37 is the, uh, I mean, the, it took much time for executing the same. Okay. So this is about uh, the system. So the, as a conclusion, let me view what is what are the advantages with this uh, knowledge-based engineering uh, approach or knowledge-based system approach. So it is originated from a combination of CAD and KBS, but has several roles depending upon the context. So in future, we can use, uh, as a conclusion, let me give the uh, future scope of this. So in future, we can use this type of system, not only for modeling and design, even we can go for the manufacturing, even we can go for analysis of uh, analysis of anything like the CAE purpose also we can do. So now uh, we are heading towards the uh, manufacturing of uh, component using the KBS system. Now we are uh, doing that work. If any of you are interested, you can join us for uh, doing the task, something like this. Okay. And uh, with this, I'm concluding. I'm just uh, exactly three o'clock now. So I'm just concluding it. And if any of you are uh, interested to contact me, so you can use this uh, mail ID. So if in future, so we can use, uh, we can have a better interaction so that we can share any knowledge in that. So uh, if you are having any questions, uh, please. Okay, so I think no questions from your side. Okay, in the chat box, uh, I'm able to see uh, the feedback link is already provided there. So please give us the feedback and how the session went and uh, how was it. So please give me the feedback and let me have the idea about my presentation as well. Yes, good afternoon. <clears throat> this is Dr. Yeah. Uh, sir, actually, uh, you are giving some input for the input for the gear design, no, sir? Yes, yes, yes. The power to be transmitted and yes. all, no? Yes. Have you, have you ensured the <clears throat> actual part of the gear, which is, uh, uh, is, is, is it the, in the simulation part, have you checked the thing and with the existing part? Yes, we have compared the same. Yes, yes, yes. What is the accuracy, sir? Because we have compared here with the CAD model, we didn't compare with the actual uh, manufacturer model, okay? Because we didn't went into that level now. Okay. Of course, by taking this CAD model, we can go for the CAM as well. But naturally, that efficiency will not reflect into my system, right? Because the manufacturing will be done by the CNC system, so I cannot guarantee what exactly went into the CNC system. So my limitation, my research limitation, is still the design and the uh, CAD modeling. So. Till that level, I have compared with the actual CAD model of the industry required or the actual model of the CAD modeling of, the, of any care. It is uh, on par with the same. So there are no errors we found and is almost uh, meeting with the same. And now we are heading towards the manufacturing. Sir. So we didn't went into it. So now we are also wanted to develop a knowledge-based system for manufacturing as well. Suppose uh, we all know for if you want to use the CNC machine, we should give the codes to it, right? So that sh code should uh, generated by itself in the system. That's what we are looking at. Our system must be able to write its own code and its own tools and its own coolant on and off. Those things are all there, right? All things, all these things should be done by our system. And by what exactly we wanted to do is uh, we just give the input as the customer requirements and output should be the uh, manufactured gear. That's what we intention and we are looking towards that. Yes. Nice, nice work, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Sir, how to claim uh, a research work for this one, sir? Because uh, everything in yeah. this is back end very uh, work of the software, no, sir? Yes, 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 you are right. How to claim the uh, research part for this work, sir? So, uh, the unfortunate thing is uh, here I cannot um, claim the patent for this because uh, software development cannot be claimed as a patent. So I didn't went for the patent. 
but uh, by just uh, publishing the papers i can claim it's uh, mine so i have uh, published many papers on this topic uh, you can even search on the google on my name so that you can have uh, many papers there or if you are interested then i'll show one paper please be online i'll show you okay sir Yeah, I'm sharing the my uh, video file. I hope you're able to see. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. So this is the uh, one of the publication from the same that you can see here. This is per gear. Okay. So this is development of knowledge based parametric card modeling system for per gear. I just given the approach there. Okay. So this is the this is published in the elsewhere. In the year 2017, you can see. So 2018, uh, you can see it here. Okay, so so if you want to have more idea about that, you just uh, 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 go through the Google and you can download it. It's a free to uh, free available. You can download it and uh, you can grow through it. Go through it. Okay, so I'll show you um, what are the uh, what is the database and how a knowledge base looks like here. You can, uh, if you are interested, you just go through this paper. You can understand. So knowledge base is there, given there. And how exactly the entire system works, I have given it here. And uh, this is the inputs this is shown you. And these are some of the formulas that we are we supposed to use for uh, design. And I have, in this uh, section, I have given the entire design procedure of the spur gear. Well, the, in fact, if you look at the design of the spur gear, there are two approaches. One is the theoretical and one is the actual industry purpose. So I have followed the industrial purpose. Okay, and th That is uh, given by the AGMA. Here you can see. AGMA is a uh, American Gear Manufacturers Association. Uh, so they have given some guidelines for the design and manufacturing of the gear. The entire world is uh, following the AGMA standards when we are going with the design of the gear. So I have adopted those. These are all from the AGMA standards. And I have adopted those. And here, it, it this figure shows the, how my entire system works. I mean, the, what is the workflow of that? And uh, the system here, I show as thing, and this is the complete workflow in a simple flow chart. And at the end, you can see the uh, model. Okay, so this is the thing. I uh, hope you understood this. Uh, if you want to have the copy, you can definitely have. So you just go through the Google and uh, uh, just type this one. You can get it. Okay, I'll uh, give it in the chat box now. Very nice work, sir. Sir, uh, Jay Kiran, sir, good, good afternoon. Hello, sir. Ganesh, sir. Yes. Ah, this is a very good work. Uh, you have done good job. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I am very happy to go through this session. Uh, what I advise is that uh, more than research and patents, what is the industry that is requirement? Uh, you can develop it by your students. Uh, and uh, presently, even Tesla is using the same knowledge-based system. Any new problem is coming, it will be updated to the cloud uh, immediately and that yes. algorithm will be developed and it will be distributed to the all the systems upgraded. So this is the most thing happening in the industry, sir. So industry is, uh, because we are academicians, we are looking more at uh, only research patents and all these things. But apart from that, there are so many things that we have to do for the industry by giving some value added products to the students so that students can when they go for such types of jobs in artificial intelligence machine learning they can use these techniques and uh, get benefited uh, with whatever we teach we have to teach them additionally sir so we should not yes, confine sir. to the syllabus or curriculum whenever we are doing some research on these areas we should uh, uh, try to add some supporting realistic uh, sort of uh, value added products like this and give the students an additional advantage that he could not get somewhere else. Yes, yes, yes. You're absolutely right, sir. In fact, we should, we should be supposed to give the uh, knowledge of this kind to the students. Yes, the, you are right, sir. Yes. Thank yes. you, Ganesh. Yes. Thank you.